We'll Speaking get into of big later. celebrities, we got Ron Mosier from the Utica OD on the line right now. Ron, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. You gave Bill the day off. Well, Bill, <laughs> you know, Bill feels great, but his voice sounds terrible. He got oh, some. Really? Yeah, he'll talk about it when he comes back. We hope this week, but he got some viral something. And it's totally affected his voice. He sounds like he's deathly ill, but he said he feels fine. Wow. Well, so, I hope he gets better. Absolutely. So I, I would imagine, Ron, you were busy this weekend covering uh, baseball, the Section 3 tournament, and you've actually got more games to cover tonight as well, I believe. Yeah, yes, we do. Mark Walslaughter has been doing a great job. He's sort of like the new me since I took over as sports editor, and uh, he did uh, doubleheader last night. Of course, it doesn't help when uh, – the first game goes longer, and because of all the runs scored, <laughs> and then uh, and then Whitesboro starts a little late and ends like right on deadline. So, um, yeah, we we won one and lost one uh, for the local baseball teams yesterday. Adirondack uh, winning a Class B title, the first since 1986, which is a great accomplishment. They've got the two brothers, Ethan and Mitchell Martin. Mickey Pazal, the coach, has been there for quite a while, and. I mean, he was a star in the 80s. He helped them win a sectional title in 1986, and now his son Andy's on the team. It's just a great feel-good story. And they were up 7-1, and they wound up winning 7-5 to over West Hill. So, And then Whitesboro turns around, and they're up 3 nothing, trying to go back-to-back in Class A, and they wind up losing 4-3 to to East Syracuse Manoa. So so we went 1-1 yesterday. We got two more games today, and uh, Marquel will be back at Onondaga Community College. Uh, and I really think, and we're guaranteed a local winner there in both games because in the opener, it's a risk in the Poland for the Class D title. I think Tom Meese, uh, former great player at RFA and then Ithaca College, uh, you know, he's the athletic director at a risk and he's been the baseball coach there for quite a while now. Mm-hmm. He's taken over Section 3 baseball as a coordinator, and he's just an outstanding guy, does a lot of hard work, and now his baseball team is back in the Section 3 finals for the fifth straight year. And they play Poland. Uh, I think they met once this year, and I think Ariskany won ten to two. But we'll see tonight. That's the Class D opener. Uh, I believe it's four thirty, and then in the nightcap, it's Class C, where West Canada Valley, I believe, is sixteen and one, and they play uh, Little Falls. Uh, Little Falls is twelve and eight, but one of those losses was an extra innings in the regular season finale to West Canada, and both of them, uh, you know, neither one of them pitched their through their best arms in that game. It was a crossover non-league regular season finale, so that should be a good one too. And so we're going to have a we're going to have a D and a C champion tonight, either way. So yeah, that's great. And those games you said are at Onondaga Community College. Yeah, they have all the finals at OCC. Uh, hey, last year, last year, the year before, I covered it because they have a turf field. I covered one game in the fog and the rain because it's such obviously great drainage because it's an artificial turf field. So. Uh, so they were able to play despite the conditions. That's yeah. pretty cool. So, oh, yeah. Oh, Ron, yeah. Ron, I wanted to ask you, this weekend, some of the games were played at Murnane, if I'm not mistaken, right? And is this what Yeah, those, those were semifinals. The semifinals. But you've talked about this before, I, I guess in basketball more so, that when we get into the tournaments, um, often they're, they're not necessarily local. I, am I off on this? Is This is what you've talked about, but we're seeing it oh, positively no, I, I, in baseball. I've written about it so many times, Jeff, and... So many times that I know Section 3 gets angry with me, I just point out the obvious that, for instance, say West Canada Valley playing Little Falls in Syracuse. Yeah. But they do have to secure sites long, a long time ahead. You know, I'm sure there are deals made where they have to, uh, they have to secure those sites months ahead of time, which yeah. I don't blame them. I just wish there was a contingency plan somehow where – Okay, if it's two Mohawk Valley area teams like Little Falls and uh, and West Canada, like Poland and Oriskany, right? have a contingency plan where those games are played at Murnane. Those right. games are played at Betts Park. Ron, I completely agree with you. I, I was happy to see, though. Is is that the norm, that the semifinal games are played at Murnane? I was happy to see there was some action going oh, on Oh, no, at that's good. Is it the norm? I don't think so. I think that's... And, this is some people from the Syracuse side will say this is my Mohawk Valley bias, but I'm just pointing out what I think is the obvious. Let's split it up a little, and uh, we have good facilities here. Are they, is it artificial turf? No, but are they great fields? Yes, right. and uh, and I think this is Tom Meese's uh, influence as Section Three coordinator. 
you know, uh, I think he's a great voice for this area. You know, like I said, he's been at Oriskany uh, as a coach for a long, long time already. And, uh, you know, he's from Rome, and he's trying to get, hey, we have Deludas Field, too. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. Uh, let's make uh, let's make use of our facilities, too, especially if uh, those teams are from our area. I, I mean, we have championship game tonight at 430. I mean, some people work that late. Yeah. And uh, this is a championship game, and then they got to drive up the hill to OCC. Even if there was, I like realize a... the advantages because it is an artificial turf field, and it is a great facility. I've been there; it's outstanding. But I don't know if West Canada Little Falls playing in on a weeknight is, you know, in Syracuse where you have to go whatever fifty-five miles away, sixty miles away. Uh, makes a lot of sense logistically. Ron, I don't know, I, that's just me. I completely agree with you. I actually do think some of the change that we talked about the games this weekend is your influence as well, and that's a, that's that's a good thing. But no, I, it's hard to argue. Syracuse wouldn't like it either. You know, that's if it was saying, if there, there was isn't, isn't ESM there, in Baldwinsville, they wouldn't want to play in Little Falls. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you've got plenty of facilities probably between exit 32 and 34A that it could be. I mean, you've got Canastota, you've got Chittenango, and there's people that work hard. To yeah. make the fields in good playing condition all year round. I mean, so what? That's one. Well, of... hey, guys, let, you, you make a good point. How about uh, in the class double A, the, the large schools? Uh, how about if uh, if the championship game was it was West Jenny Baldwinsville, West Genesee Baldwinsville, and that was played at Renane? You think Syracuse people wouldn't squawk? No, I, I, uh, they absolutely yeah, would. Of course, they absolutely would. All right, and, so and they would have an argument. Um, you know. Uh, by the way, it's, it's shifting gears a little, but um, and no pun intended with the ride, Andrew. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, it's exciting. Hopefully, uh, we'll get good uh, weather for that. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Keep praying for that. Um, <laughs> no, I was going to shift gears to softball because we lost two great teams yesterday. Uh, um, Whitesboro, Whitesboro came ever so close to uh, ending a thirty-year drought in the Class A final. They lost to Jamesville Dewitt three to two. Uh, a few unearned runs. You know, sophomore Caitlin Riley pitched great. Whitesboro actually out hit them, out hit JD, and and still lost three to two. But a, a great season for Aaron Sarasulo's uh, Warriors. And then Oneida, who was ranked number two in the state, is great in softball every year. Uh, Mike Kiro's done such a super job with that program, and they're still super young, by the way. Anyway, they lose a two nothing lead and uh, and wind up losing four to two to Christian Brothers Academy. So, I mean, two great great teams, uh, two great TBL uh, division champions lost out yesterday. But uh, I'm pretty sure they'll be back next year. All right, and again, we can you can find the full reports at uticaod.com, and we'll be watching tonight. We'll be looking tonight for updates on uh, Little Falls, West Canada Valley, and then Poland and Ariskany. They'll meet in Class D uh, tonight. Ron, go yeah, ahead. Po- yeah, Poland or Iskany is the opener. So, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Hey, right, Ron, Ron, we'll Moser. see you Friday. Bring your bring yeah, your. Yeah, we'll uh, see you Friday. Hey, hey, Andrew, bring a raincoat, and then maybe it won't rain. All right, exactly. I'll become over prepared for my warm my warm and wet weather gear. So, well, it's a great thing. It's one of the best things my wife Monica and I have ever done, and it'll be her tenth and my fifth. And uh, uh, you just get excited. I don't. I don't even sleep the night before. I set the alarm for four, but I don't even need to. Yeah. So. You can, well, I'll see you on the bus, I'm sure, uh, Friday morning. So, Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Thank you. Uh, you, you too. Ron. All right. That's Ron Mosier from the Utica OD. Of course, UticaOD.com. And Ron and his wife will be in the Ride for Missing Children on Friday. Andrew will as well. Yes. So thank you to all three of you for... It's a, We've had a, a rough training schedule with regards to the weather, so I'm hoping that won't be the case for Friday. But either way... The difficulties of riding in the rain or being uncomfortable aren't uh, anything that compared to what these families are going through. So, All right. and it's an Ron, honor to do. As Ron said, uh, great seasons, but unfortunately, uh, Whitesboro boys and girls coming up short in baseball and softball uh, this weekend in the section tournament. And uh, Adirondack defeated West Hill, boys baseball in Class B. Uh, on the girls' side, Oneida falls to cba so their season comes to an end but uh, we'll find out tonight we, we will have a local winner in class c and class d little falls takes on west canada valley in class c and in class d it's poland and Oriskany.